If you can hear my neighbors start back in the background, no you don't. Also, it is 5.30 in the evening and is this an acceptable time to go to bed? Asking from your friendly neighborhood teacher. Y'all. But it's so cute. If I'm not reading thrillers, then there's something wrong with me, probably. Do not for one second say, oh, Hannah recommended this book to me. I did not. I did not. You can't have, what is that old saying? No, thanks. beautiful people of the internet welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is Hannah if you're new here and I'm so excited that you've joined me today for today's video we're going to be doing a cozy reading vlog I do not know how long this vlog is going to last but I have a lot of books to finish and we need to get some reading done the first book that I want to tackle in this vlog is Burn Town by Jennifer McMahon I have read a Jennifer McMahon before I read Children on the Hill and I did like that one it was okay it wasn't anything super memorable but I am going to be buddy reading this one with my friend Keisha and Gwen. I think Keisha has already DNF'd it, so I'm not sure if that's a good sign or not. I don't really know Gwen's thoughts on it just yet, so we'll have to wait and see. But I'm a little ways into it, and so far it's like really strange. That's literally all I can say about it is that it's really strange, and it's kind of hard to keep up with. There's a lot of stuff going on and a lot of characters. Uh, I would like to say so far so good, but I'm not really sure. Let's go ahead and get this reading vlog started and hopefully I'll see you soon with some good news. Hi, if you can hear my neighbors start back in the background, no you don't. Also, it is 5.30 in the evening and is this an acceptable time to go to bed? Asking from your friendly neighborhood teacher. <sighs> this is the last week of school and it is so hectic, but at the same time, nothing's happening. <laughs> If you know, you know, otherwise I can't explain it to you. Also, I need to show you my earrings because this is exactly how I felt today. All right, enough for the complaints. Okay, let's talk about Burn Town because if you watch my previous clip, which I'm sure you have because you had to watch that one to get here, then you know that my thoughts were not that nice. But since then I have finished it and let's talk about it. I don't actually know how to talk to you about this book. <sighs> this is the most convoluted story I think I've ever read in my entire life. <sighs> What is Burn Town about? I'm asking you. Do you know? Because <laughs> I don't. Okay, seriousness, okay? This was following a lot of different characters, okay? There were multiple points of view in this story, and there has been a murder take place, and all of these people are somehow linked. And it's also a dual timeline. Like, you're getting things from the past, but you're also getting things from present day, and it's all weaved together in this one big story. So you do not understand really what's going on until about... 80% of the way through. At least I did. That's not to say you won't, but I didn't. This was so convoluted. There were so many things going on, so many characters to follow, that I honestly had no idea what to focus on. And I will say the last 50 pages did keep my attention. It did keep me interested. It did keep me intrigued. But that's about it. Throughout this book, I was thinking so many times, let me just DNF it. Let me just DNF it. But the perfectionist in me and the type A is just so against DNFing, guys. If I DNF a book, you know it's bad because I have yet to DNF very many books. But I ended up giving this one a two star. I did not like this really at all. I did like the ending, like I told you. I did like how things wrapped up to a degree. I just, it was so weird. It was strange. And that's that. So for the rest of the week, I have a crazy week ahead of me. But after that, I'm on summer vacation. So it's gotta be crazy before it gets better. So this week, my main priority is gonna be Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. That is my main priority because I have to get that done by Sunday because the book club discussion on Gwen's Patreon is Sunday and I've still not finished it. So that's priority number one. Priority number two, I really want to get to The Elite by Kira Cass. This is book two in the selection series. And guys, let me tell you, this is so much fun. I am loving this series. I loved the selection. And this one is just a continuation of that story. Basically, it's Hunger Games with dresses where they get chosen to go win this prince's heart and they get picked off one by one. Not killed, but they just like go home. It's really not that big of a deal. But it's so cute. It's so cute. The little romance in here, 
so cute. So to keep myself accountable for that one, I'm gonna host some sprints tomorrow night because I can't do them on my regular night, Friday night. I'm gonna go all out of town. Hopefully I can show you that because that would be so much fun. But yeah, I'm gonna be hosting some sprints tomorrow night to keep myself accountable for this one. And hopefully I have an update for that soon. So for tonight, I don't think there's any sprints going on, so I may just have to read solo, which is totally fine. But I am gonna be reading just for the summer. So I better quit jabbering and get busy. Party people, I have a reading update for you and it's kind of chaotic, I'm not even gonna lie. So I'm in this mood right now where I literally just wanna pick up everything. Like I literally wanna read everything at once, but I can't do that. <laughs> And it's really frustrating because I'll pick up a book and then I won't finish it and then I'll pick up another book. It's a little chaotic. You wanna see how little of the people? They're right here. They're right there. Yep, right there. <laughs> Today was our, technically our last day of school because the kids, like we just had a few kids show up and it wasn't even required for them to show up. Basically the teachers got to work in their classrooms today, which was so awesome because I needed to get a few things done in my classroom and I got a lot of stuff done in my classroom. I actually feel really good about the progress that I made today. For the past few years, I've had to move classrooms or I've had to move grades and this is the one year that I do not have to do that and I'm so excited about the fact that I just don't have to move rooms. <laughs> so I'm really excited about the progress that I made today. I feel really ready to not go into my classroom this summer. I mean, I will have to like eventually, but hopefully I won't have to till like the end of July. And while I was doing that, I really wanted to listen to something and I found this book on Everand and it's called One of Our Own and it's by Lucinda Berry. And let me just let me say this. I read a book by Lucinda Berry and I'm not going to tell you the name of it because I feel like it's a potential spoiler for this one because this one is very similar. So anyway, I have read by Lucinda Berry before, but I just read that one book and it was a tough one, a tough one. And I don't know what I was thinking going into another Lucinda Berry blind, but I did. Let me just clarify this. Let me say this loud and clear. I am not recommending this book to you. I am, do not for one second say, oh, Hannah, I recommended this book to me. I did not. I did not. All I'm telling you is that I read it today. I read it. Well, I listened to it today. It's a very short audiobook. It's very fast. It's basically one of those books where your moral compass cannot give it five stars, but at the same time, you're like, whoa. You know, that was this book for me. There were so many things happening in this book that were dark. I can't even explain it to you. Let me just give you the synopsis and then you can kind of read in between the lines from there. So this book is following a woman that works at the suicide prevention hotline and she gets a call from this girl who's in obvious distress and she calls because there has been a bunch of boys that have taken advantage of her and sexually assaulted her and there's video evidence of it and it's being passed around at school so on and so forth so you just kind of get the gist of there that is literally two minutes into that audiobook two minutes so you can kind of read in between the lines of how deep and dark this one gets and i was not prepared i was not prepared for the level of depths this one went and i should have been because I read that book by Lucinda Berry before, and I should have been, because this one is kind of similar. I am not recommending this book to you. I just read it. That's literally it. I didn't even give it a rating just because I couldn't. So do with that what you will. Next, I told you this was chaotic. Next, let's talk about the elite. I got about 47% of this one last night. I did some theme sprints with this one, and I'm absolutely eating this one up. I am loving revisiting America and Maxon. Y'all, if you've not read the selection series, I feel like I'm late to the game on this one, but it's so good. It's so good. And listen, you cannot convince me for one single second that Prince Maxon is not Nicholas Galtson. I mean, can come on, can you see it? Because I can see it. Last but not least, let's talk about Just for the Summer. I am about 150 pages into that one and I'm really enjoying this one. I read Part of Your World last month. I don't know if I mentioned that before. No, I read Part of Your World this month. Oh my gosh, this month has lasted a year. Anyway, I read Part of Your World earlier this month and didn't really vibe with it. I think I had a lot of issues with the main character and I think that kind of tainted my enjoyment of it. But this 
one is the exact opposite. I am loving both of these characters. I'm really getting the vibe. I'm like getting the romantic tension and I'm really liking it so far. I really like the whole toxic family trope that Abby Jimenez does really well. And in this case, it's a toxic mom. And I like that themes like that are sprinkled into her books. I think they add a lot of character and a lot of depth and I can appreciate that. I need to finish both of those books fairly soon. I would like to get Just for the Summer done first, but if I pick up the elites, y'all just know that I'm having the time of my life with that one. Three books to talk about in one update. That's a little bit chaotic, Anna. I'm so sorry for that, guys. Say goodbye to my dogs. They're mad at me. I'm gonna go give them their toy back, so we'll talk soon. Hi. There's a pug butt over there. I don't know if you can see it. You can't. Oh, it's right here. Today was my last day of school. Thank goodness. And I am so excited. I wanted to update you really quickly because I am almost finished with Just for the Summer. <sighs> I didn't expect to read that much last night, but I came home from Bible study and like literally laid in bed and I put my headphones in and I sat there and listened to this book for about mm, two or three hours. <laughs> and I am freaking loving it! Oh my gosh, it is so cute. And I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I've been really hesitant about Abby Jimenez because her books are so hyped. And I tend to get a little nervous when things are overhyped. And Abby Jimenez is really hyped. So I didn't want to go in with my expectations super high. And let me just say, this was, this was good. Like, in the beginning, it was good. It was cute. It was funny. And I really, really liked it. But, like, once you get into the meat of the relationship, into the meat of everything that's going on, that's when it's good. Okay, that's when this separates itself from just your average rom-com. This digs so much deeper than a surface level romance. And I am obsessed with it. Oh my gosh. Which one of you was going to tell me about the unicorn floaty? And I'm appalled that nobody told me about it. We need to talk about that. We need to talk about that unicorn floaty scene, okay? This is just a check-in before I finish this book because I have about... I don't know, 60 pages left. And I'm going to sit here until I finish this book today. I'll check in in a minute. So I have to talk about something really quickly that I'm absolutely loving in this book is that the relationship that Emma has with Maddie and their friendship and just the closeness and Maddie is always telling Emma these things that Emma knows deep down but Maddie just knows how to voice them a, bit, a little bit better. But there was this one scene where things had gone wrong with Emma's mom and Maddie is talking to Justin and also like the way that she speaks to Justin and acts around Justin is just so precious. I just love Maddie so, so much. So I have to read this to you because it was just so precious and I can not not read it to you. And Maddie is talking to Justin and she says, do you know what to do when she gets small? I shook my head no. She's going to get really detached and distant. Give her some space, but don't leave her alone. And whatever you do, never let her take off. Okay, I'm serious. Keep her near you. Put her in a room. Let her isolate. Let her sleep. Bring her food. Don't talk to her until she's ready to talk. Give her time to get out of it, but don't let her leave. We all need a friend like Maddie. So it is day one of the Mystery Mayhem Readathon, and I have a lot 
of stuff to update you on. Okay, so I'll just buckle up. First and foremost, I am making breakfast for dinner, so I'm gonna be doing all that while I'm talking to you. You can't have breakfast without eggs. Anyway, so let's chat. First and foremost, let's talk about this. Mystery and Mayhem. Mystery and Mayhem is the readathon that I have talked about for a little bit recently. Maddie reached out to me. She is at the Bookish Cottage and she is such a sweetest, she's just the sweetest human. And she reached out to me and asked me to co-host with her. And it's basically a readathon that celebrates all things mystery. And she's given us three teams and we got to choose Lassies, Sleuths, or Masterminds. And being the rule follower that I am, I chose the Lassies. So my team is the Lassies. We're the detectives of the group. And so basically the more books you read, the more points you earn and the better off your team will be. So let's back up and let's talk about Just for the Summer. Just for the Summer was one of the best romances that I've ever read in my entire life. <laughs> I finished it by the way and I finished it last night and I was in a load of tears. I was a mess when I finished that book because let me just tell you I understand now. I understand what you guys are talking about about Abby Jimenez, she just does something so different than just your average rom-com. She goes there, she gets the postcard, and then she comes back. She she tackles these deep topics. For example, in this one, it was about like her mom and the toxicity that came with her mom and how she couldn't stop caring about her mom because it was her mom. Honestly, it was more toxic for her to hold on to her mom than to let her go. So I loved that. I loved that tackling of that topic. I think that a lot of people are afraid to do that and hats off to Abby for tackling it. Another thing, why is nobody talking about Maddie? Maddie is one of the best characters that I have read about in my entire life. She is Emma's best friend in this story. And listen, friendship to me is a huge thing. And so Maddie was like the epitome of what a best friend should be. Like she was giving Justin pointers and telling Justin all these things about what to expect from Emma. That's a good friend, my friend. So none of us are surprised that I gave this book five stars. Again, this book has raving reviews and for good reason because there, this is a book that deserves it. Next, I need to talk to you about The Elite. I got to about 50% of that and I'm not sure if I updated you since. I did pick it up last night and was going to read it last night. Keisha was doing some reading sprints but I read about 6% more so I'm like 56% now and I got really dizzy last night and for some reason I just felt really weak and so I chose my health over reading and I went to bed and I feel much better today. I don't know what all that was about. So that's where I'm at with that. I'm still really loving it. But I did want to update you on the first book that I'm reading for the Mystery and Mayhem Readathon because it is day one and I picked up All the Missing Girls by Megan Miranda. Hold on. I have that. Let me go get it. Listen, Linda, y'all know that I love me a good thriller. Okay, I read thrillers 99% of the time. If I'm not reading thrillers, then there's something wrong with me probably. <laughs> No, not really. I love thrillers. I have heard mixed things about our friend Megan Miranda here. I've heard that she's a very mid thriller author. And let me tell you, I have read some very good thrillers. So I'm about 55% of the way through this one. And this bookmark says it all, honey. <sighs> listen, listen, listen. Um this ain't it. This is not it. I am so incredibly bored. It is pretty bad for me to get bored in a thriller. This is boring. This is so boring. How dare you, Megan Miranda, put a Ferris wheel on the cover and there's really, we're not even in the fair. That's where the disappearance took place is at this fair and that's it. You do not get to see the fair at all. All you were, all you were doing is you were following our character, Nicolette, and she's trying to figure out what happened to her friend. I mean, she's not even really doing anything. She's just walking around like causing havoc. This is terrible. <laughs> no, that's it. It's terrible. <laughs> I gave it a fair chance. I gave it a fair chance. I'm not going to DNF it because I'm really close to the ending and I really want to finish this and I want to put it towards my team's points, but this is not good. I'm bored. So that's about it. I wish I had a happier update for you. Just for the summer was pretty happy. So I'm going to continue making my little breakfast for dinner here. I think tonight we're going to watch another episode of Survivor because we've been on a Survivor kick recently and we started watching this season called Gen X versus Millennials. I'm actually dying. That is so funny and like the things that these people are saying are hilarious. So we'll probably watch another episode of that while we eat and then hopefully 
and get this finished because I do not want to even look at this book tomorrow. Also, real quick, I need to tell you that tomorrow we're going on a little trip, like a little mini trip. We're going out of town to Kentucky. Once again, we're gonna go up to the Ark Museum. If you guys are familiar with that, it's basically a big replica of Noah's Ark from the Bible. I've heard really good things of people that have gone and I've not been able to go myself. So my entire church is gonna get to go. And yeah, hopefully I'll get to bring you along with me for that. I'll see you when I see you. beautiful humans. I've got one final update for you and I will leave you alone. So update number one, I think I showed you guys yesterday when we went to the Ark. First of all, if you guys have never heard of what that is, it's basically a replica, a life-size replica of Noah's Ark from the Bible. So basically this man took scripture and brought it to life and brought us this life-size replica of the ark. By the way, if you've never read about the story, you should go check it out in Genesis. It's a really good story. And our church just finally decided that we're gonna go and we're gonna go see it. And it was a blast. It was a very humbling experience also to kind of see scripture come to life. And I truly think that throughout the whole thing that there are going to be people led to Christ just by that being there. Because as a believer, it fills my heart with joy going in there. But I could see where people maybe not, don't believe and don't know Christ and then go into something like that and see all those messages and see all of these things. It gets the brain working. So yeah, I would highly recommend that you go, if you, especially if you're interested. I would recommend you go on a weekday. Because we went on a Saturday and a Memorial Day weekend, which was not very smart, but it was fantastic regardless. All right, the last two updates that I have for you, one is good and one is bad. So let's start with the good one. I finished the Elite and of course I loved this. It was a continuation of the selection and it was following America and her attempt to win Maxon's heart. 
and become the next princess. Well, this one definitely took a turn that I was just kind of like not expecting, but it also is making me feel all the things. And I'm not even gonna lie, some of it was not good. But here's the here's the deal. I gave this one a solid four stars and I'm still in love with this entire series. I definitely will binge this series this summer. But I will say, I think in the very beginning of the series, you're following America as she is trying to find herself. And she is very immature. Like she makes the most rash decisions and she's finally being called out on that. And someone is finally saying, Girl, you need to grow up a little bit. Another thing that I didn't really like in this book is that she wants Prince Maxon to choose. He, she doesn't want him showing affection to the other girls, but in the same breath, she is going and feeling this way about Aspen. You can't have, what is that old saying? You can't have your pork and eat it too. You can't have your what? I don't know what it is. You, you can't have both, okay? You can't have both. And so I was a little bit irritated with our friend America here at the end, but I did like how this one kind of left on a cliffhanger to continue into the next book. So four stars. And last but not least, I hate to end the video on a sour note, <laughs> but I did finish All the Missing Girls by Megan Miranda. This was my very first Megan Miranda and probably my last. I'm so sorry. This was not good. And I told you guys before that I was not enjoying it. But at that point, I was kind of like, oh, it's going to be like a two star. It's, it's not really that bad. One star. And usually I only save one stars for books that make me mad or like make me frustrated. This one, I was just bored. Like this is a thriller and it made me so incredibly bored. And I was annoyed at that fact, at the fact that you could not keep my attention. This main character was trying to find her best friend that had gone missing. And she was basically just trying to find out what happened to her, who it was she murdered, what, what was the deal? And honestly, I just felt like our main character was just running around doing nothing. <laughs> like she, she talked like she was doing stuff. But in reality, she wasn't really doing anything. The actual person who ended up doing the killings, because there's more than one, it was so dumb. It was so dumb. I did not like this book. And I have heard really mid things about Megan Miranda. So I have a feeling that this is probably going to be my one and only Megan Miranda book. I actually have a couple of her books on my shelves right now that I'm probably going to unhaul because if they're anything like this one, no thanks. Okay, my friends, I'm going to end the video here. Thanks so much for joining me on this crazy, chaotic, cozy reading vlog. We had a lot of books being read and a lot of things going on. And I'm just so thankful that you made it this far. If you made it this far, leave me a Ferris wheel emoji to show that you know my thoughts <laughs> about this book now because yikes. All right, my friends, until next time, I will see you in my next video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.